Well, hey, welcome. I'm Nate Smoyer, Director of Marketing here at Avail, and I'm joined by Tyler Forte, founder of Felix Home, a real estate brokerage out of Nashville, Tennessee. Tyler, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Nate. Yeah, so today I want to talk to you about virtual showings. It's been a bit of a trend recently, and so let's just jump right into it. First, what is a virtual showing? Yeah, so virtual showing, you know, as it sounds, is um, pretty much just like your, your traditional, you know, in-person showing, um, but in times that, you know, doesn't really allow for person-to-person -person contact, um, it's kind of a great alternative. So it could be literally as simple as pulling out your iPhone, jumping on FaceTime with, uh, you know, a potential client, and just showing them the home as if you would, uh, you know, in real life. And it doesn't have to be one-on-one. -on -one. It can also be, you know, you can have that video part of your listing, but you were telling me about doing watch parties. What's a watch party? Yeah, so, you know, the virtual showing right is more of a one-on-one -on -one experience. I guess a watch party would be more akin to a virtual open house, right, where you actually live stream it um, and get, you know, folks that are interested in the property to watch it. Yeah. And so why are agents bothering? You know, if I'm a landlord or a real estate agent, you know, it's kind of similar if I'm trying to attract a buyer or a renter. Why are, why are they bothering doing virtual showings? Why not just have everyone show up? Well, uh, Nate, um, you know, sometimes that's not a possibility, right? Uh, as we're experiencing right now, um, you know, some type of contagious virus, uh, you know, you don't really want to have that physical contact. But there's other reasons too. You know, some folks, um, you know, are maybe overseas, right? And, and you have a buyer that you're working with who, uh, you know, just isn't able to be there physically, still wants to see the property. Um, and so, you know, real estate hasn't always been the, uh, the first industry to warm up to new technology, but I think a couple of firms are definitely kind of paving the way and, and incorporating that into their offering, in addition to having that traditional, you know, in-person style um, way of doing things as well. I think that's a good point. And, you know, obviously, you know, if there's a contagious disease like the flu going around or the stomach right. bug, it's good for you both in the renter or buyer, but also there's the possibility of generating new leads and even creating exposure either for that property uh, or yourself. I am curious though, like what sort of equipment do I need? You know, it could be uh, as uh, kind of complicated as buying, you know, a really fancy camera, um, doing something that pre-recorded um, or like I said it could be really as simple as just taking out your phone um, you know opening up FaceTime opening up Google Hangouts and you know literally just having a um, you know a, a kind of video call with someone it really doesn't have to be complicated yeah I, I, I totally agree with you and so after the virtual showing you know if uh, the prospect who's renter or buying uh, is thinking about the place do you recommend they still come to the place if possible or do you say you know the virtual showing is enough you know, personally, Nate, um, you know, buying a home is, is such a big decision. Um, you know, I can see for other things uh, in life where, you know, seeing it, you know, just on a, on a, on a, on a screen might be, um, you know, just, but buying a home is a really big decision for folks. Um, I personally recommend that, you know, if they can, uh, they should definitely try and schedule something in person. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Before we close out this video, uh, are there any sort of pro tips that you'd like to share with the landlords and real estate agents who may be watching? Yeah, I mean, you know, what you should do is one, be natural. Yeah, you're talking into a screen, but at the end of the day, you really want to try and picture like you're talking, you know, directly to, uh, to an actual human. Um, you know, the other thing is be just as thorough as you would in a, you know, um, in a physical environment, right? So you want to go over kind of explore the nook and crannies of the home, um, you know, focus on the kitchen, focus on the bathrooms, the real selling points, and, um, you know, just don't really overlook anything. Uh, that would be kind of my biggest advice to folks that are just starting out with virtual tours or virtual showings. Yeah, well, I appreciate you sharing all those pro tips and all the other details about how to do virtual showings. And for those of you watching who want more information on how to do virtual showings and the best ways of doing that, check the links below this video or in this post to learn more about it. Until then, we'll see you next time.